morning, everybody. Welcome to today's video. If you guys are new, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you to whoever subscribed. Today, we're joined by, introduce yourself. My name's Anthony. This is my uh, 2018 Audi RS3. It's a stage one tune, the Unitronic, E85. There you go. 592 horsepower, 528 torque. So, <laughs> for those who saw my recent video where I compared my N55 M2 versus a completely bone stock minus a resonator delete RS3, I said in that video I wanted to drive a tuned one because I just feel like that engine has so much potential that a tuned car is going to be a completely different world. So I kind of got to experience what the car's like stock. Again, super fast, but not a lot of personality, kind of boring. This should be crazy. Should be a completely different car. I mean, he's not even running down pipes. He's not running an in... Are you not running an intake, are you? Yeah, I got an intake. intake. Oh, you do have an intake? Yeah. Intercooler? No intercooler. No intercooler. So like, yeah. there's still mods to be done. He could still be staged. These cars are crazy. Yeah. I'm going to hop in the driver's seat later, but for right now, I kind of just want to get my initial reaction of how this car sounds while my GoPro is filming nothing on the ground. Let's go. I wasn't even filming, he comes off and does a light pull and I'm like, oh geez. <laughs> Boost just throwing me in my seat. This is like the first video where I'm getting a passenger seat reaction, which is even better. I don't think I've ever been in the passenger seat of my car. Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. I gotta be careful, I'm gonna spill my coffee. Jeez. <laughs> Dude, it's like already night and day. Even stock, this car's quick. Like this car's quicker than my M2. Or as quick as my M2 stock. Quick on a mission today's video. My man over here sells frameless. I want you to actually explain it because I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> Tell him about your product so, so we can give you a little bit of plug because we like to plug people in these videos. Me and my boy Tyler started a company called Frameless Mounts. It's quick release license plate mounts for uh, photographers or car shows if you don't want your actual plate in the shot. It's magnetic, extremely strong. It's been tested over 200 miles an hour. Has it really? Yeah. Who was that? Did you self-test that one? No. Good. My, my Good. buddy with a uh, very fast Dodge Viper no. did. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Bumps, cracks, everything, you know, it's it'll it'll hold up. I watched you remove yeah. it. So pretty much it's like, is it magnetic? It's magnetic, yeah. It's uh, N52, which is the strongest magnets you could get. Okay. It's uh, N52 neodone magnets. Like when he pulled it off, it was like a... Yeah. Like a, like a, it looked like it was clipped on. And when he takes it off, you, it's literally almost as if you're running no license plate. Like yeah. you don't even really see the magnets. It's pretty cool. I actually might need some for myself. But yeah, so I'll have that link down below. You got to plug him. You know I'm in his RS3. You got to yeah. be nice. Enjoy the rest of the video. Buddy, we are in a stage one. E85 RS3. Dude, I've been driving my GT4 so much that like my brain's first thought was to put my foot on the clutch. That was where I'm at. Cool. This should be a completely different experience. It's not gonna be a whole lot louder probably than my last experience, which I've thought about. If in a world where I do ever buy a sleeper, it is cool to not have an exhaust on it, only because you're then sleeping a little more. Because no one can even hear you go really fast. Like when my M2 was stock, I could get completely sideways and no one would even hear me. It's so funny. Dude, these things are just hungry. Oh, it just wants to go. I want to do like a comprehensive review of this car. The problem is I've already driven it. So the comprehensive review is going to be on the differences between this. I'll let you drive with the windows closed just because there's no need. Is going to be kind of the, just the differences between this and a stock RS3 because they're two completely different cars. But you're also running springs. What springs are you running? h and Smart man. Yeah. On my Golf, I was running a uh, racing line VWR springs. Nice. They were pretty horrible. Performance wise, they were good, but they were very like, like I mean, I want to use the word springy, but <laughs> that's kind of a bad word. They were bouncy. Oh, like yeah. if you hit something, your car was going to bounce. It wasn't kind of like uh, as mag ride would be. All right, let's do a little uh, third gear pull. Jesus Christ. That's crazy. That pull is pretty hard. The torque down low, yeah. where these cars kind of usually are just dead, is like still impressive. Turbo lag's not very bad. Are these twin scroll or they're just uh, normal just turbos? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, even stock, like maybe could tell a difference, but again, I hadn't driven that car in a long time. I'm not gonna make that claim, but it's still not bad at all. I mean, like you said, it pulls down low anyway. I wanna see how it is from a get go. Yeah, launch in this car, launch. dude. Probably spin some wheel. Second gear. Holy f these cars are fast. Jeez, dude. This throws you back. Like everyone says, it feels very similar to, I don't wanna use the word because the word just gets misused, but it feels like a supercar. Like, it pulls similar to like a Herc. <laughs> like, yeah. like your car is stage one, yep. though you are running E85. This is literally almost as fast as my NSX. That, it's mind blowing. That yeah. doesn't make any logical sense. I I'm actually in, drove a new NSX a couple weeks ago and it, it literally felt like this. Yeah. And I was like, it's super cars are kind of ruined for me. Well, You're you know, so right. And this isn't even that heavily tuned at right all. It's stage one, I don't have any more to go. I can't even imagine what it's like. My stepdad just got the uh, V12 Bentley Continental GT Suite. Okay, those are sweet. And that thing felt slow as 
Oh, I'm sure. It felt slow, and I was so disappointed. So when I got in the NSX same day, I was like, oh, this is so much better. Yeah. <laughs> the NSX is by no means a slow car. I mean, oh, it's a, no. we're talking a sub three second car stock, you know? Yeah. I was catless on mine, so it pulled a little hard. And, and again, that car was Huracan quick. That car felt quicker than Huracan's, yeah. felt quicker than the V10 R8s, the new ones, V10 Plus. Yeah. And this feels similar. Yeah, I've been on a cruise with the 2020 R8. I remember driving, going on a cruise with my NSX, Choi 720, and one of Choi's friends brought along a W12 Bentayga. This homie was keeping up with us the entire time. That wow. car is so quick for Crazy. just being this massive SUV. Yeah. It sounds really good, it's super quick. He was mobbing like Sunset Boulevard, obviously going the speed limit, guys. We would never go over the <laughs> speed limit. And that car was just taken, I mean, obviously I'm sure his body roll was just out the ass, but. Oh, yeah. Maybe not. I mean, maybe it handles well. I don't know. I think until that day, I didn't even know they made a W12 Bentayga. And I was yeah. like, whoa, that's an impressive car right there. My big thing I didn't get to do with this car last time is take it through a canyon. I'm not going to go ham by any means. But I feel like the big thing with this car, especially in the last video where I compared it to an M2, which is an absolute ripper around the canyon, around the track, beautifully balanced, rear wheel drive. This is obviously supposed to have understeer. Keep in mind, I previously owned a Mark 7 Golf R. And there's something about about understeer. I'm gonna say this right now. Some people might disagree. You might actually know what I'm saying, especially he used to have a fully built S4. You are, I'm not gonna say understeer in specific, but all wheel drive, the Quattro system, that is front bias, I'd say a little, yeah. supposed to be rear bias, but I think we all kind of know it's more, more front understeer. bias. You get a little more road feedback, I feel like. Like when your tires are squealing and you can feel like, like the way my Golf R worked was I could feel those back tires, they wouldn't spin, but they'd almost like, follow around the back. I don't want to say power slide because by no means were they power sliding, but I knew exactly what that car was doing. I knew exactly where the limit was. Whereas in an M2, obviously it's better if you're going to be oversteering, technically, if you know what you're doing as a driver rather than understeering and flying off a cliff. But sometimes it'll oversteer out of nowhere. Sometimes that back will just buck out. You could give it too much throttle, your tires are wet, whatever it may be, it's less predictable. And obviously it's a better car and I'm not trying to give credit to <laughs> understeer. <laughs> no one wants understeer, but I can genuinely say I miss the way my golf drove around a canyon and just that feedback it gave me. And I think on a track, I would not be saying that because obviously I'd be pushing the cars a lot harder and obviously the M2 is going to handle the max a lot better than these like front wheel drive biased cars are. But whatever, we're going on the canyon right now. Let's do a little first gear pull. Jesus Christ. That's beautiful. For a four door little cruiser, that is just absolutely insane. No one expects it. No. This is such a fun car. Such a fun car. I'm so curious how it's gonna handle. I'm just, I've been wondering this whole time. Here's the issue. So I can kind of admit, I think people have kind of gotten the hint of this. I have been slightly interested in RS3. Hence why I filmed the video with Ryan's that I compared against my M2. And hence why I'm in another one that is modified. I kind of want to see how this car is. When I filmed the last video, that was kind of my first experience in an RS3 with that five cylinder. And I had wanted one since they came out, but when they came out, the price point just wasn't where I wanted it to be, and I knew they were going to come down eventually. And the cars are holding pretty well. Like, I feel like owners can't complain. The depreciation hasn't been horrible. But right now, I think they're kind of done doing their, for the most part, most of their depreciation. And I'm kind of interested in them. But what I was doing wrong at some point, and I'll kind of get into why I'm looking to sell my M2. I've been kind of telling you guys that it is available. If anyone's looking to buy it, I haven't really announced what my price would be, but I told people to make offers. But the reason is both my cars are set up the same. They're both rear wheel drive. They both make similar power. Obviously my GT4 around a canyon will destroy my M2. Not severely, but for the most, yeah, severely. And in a straight line, my M2 would probably beat my GT4. What's that? Brake pads, wear limit reached. Great. <laughs> As we pull into the canyon. Yeah, my uh, mechanic said I still had a lot of pad on them. So what I was doing was I was watching all these track tests of the RS3 and I'm like kind of getting sad, right? Because all the track tests aren't great. I mean, you're going to hear the normal, the understeer yeah. and all this stuff. And I'm like, why am I watching track tests on a car that I'm trying to replace a car that's great around a track and that's the reason I don't need it. Like I don't need the M2 because I already have a GT4 and that's my whole take on it. So why am I looking at track tests on the car to replace the car that I'm getting rid of because it's the same as my track car, you know what I mean? So I feel like I started watching more road tests. I'm like, this is a perfect road car. And even around a canyon, I'm sure this would keep up with an M2 around the canyon, especially the N55 and especially with this much power in between. Oh yeah. All right, we'll start getting on in a little bit. 
I will say the one thing about an M2, once you drive an M2, the way the balance is in that car, like everything else in its class feels less balanced. Like that car is set up so well. I have to keep in mind I'm driving a four-door sedan around right now, not a little short rear-wheel drive BMW. But the cool thing with this is you have all this power, like, oh my god. <laughs> This thing is so fast, it's hilarious. Oh, dude, these things rip. Like, that's the thing with, with Quattro. I feel like it has a really bad reputation every time someone takes it to a track. And again, you can take these cars to the track. I mean, they're doing track tests with them and they're not horrible. But around a canyon, I just don't think that, that understeer is as bad as it is around a track, you know? Yeah. And as long as you're not like, the high speed. as long as you're not Jim Conning your car around, you're not going to be pushing it to a limit where that understeer is even prevalent, you know? Yeah, it's all your suspension setup as well. Once I get the coilovers on here, we'll drive it again, see how you feel. I always hate having a passenger. I drive like a b because I just, at the corner of my eye, see you getting launched around your car. <laughs> see, even right there, like that was what my golf would do, is the yeah. back tires follow around, where when you think they would understeer. Keep in mind, I am driving very south right now. I'm not going ham. <laughs> but this road is very quick and twisty. In my opinion, out of all the roads in California I've driven, this is my favorite. This car is so quick that like, on roads like this, it's quick acceleration and then on the brakes because you're just mobbing. You just get through a certain point. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's feel some understeer. Nope. <laughs> yes, it's not bad. Dude, it's not bad. And keep in mind, he is on coil, so I'm sure that helps the understeer. He is running Toyos, you said? Yeah, Toyo uh, proxies. And supposedly the tire, the stock tire on this car, which is it? Bridgestones they put on this or something? Uh, they have the Pirelli P0s. Oh yeah, Pirelli P0s. Supposedly... Standard setup. Yes, bigger in the front, right? To help smaller that... Smaller in the front, actually, yeah. Oh yeah, no, you're right. No, it's bigger wider in the... tire yeah, in the yeah, front. It's a 255 in the front and 235 yeah, in the back. Yeah, so weird. But I switched it to 255 all around. Okay, that's so probably why. A squared setup, yeah. Do you like that better? I love it. When I had the stock setup, the dealer sold it to me with a bubble in the tire. Really? I didn't see it until I got home, so they planned that I did it. Jeez. And, uh, now we can rip it. <laughs> Dude! <laughs> that five cylinder here. Let's open the windows a little if audio cuts out. It's pretty windy today, so it might. <laughs> it just pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls. You're doing like a quarter mile pull on this thing? Okay. It just doesn't stop, huh? It just pulls and pulls and pulls until you let off the gas. At Crazy. Yeah. Have you dragged this car before? I haven't taken it to the strip, but I've done dragging. I and what numbers it. are you making? I did an 11-0 on the street. <laughs> That's faster than my NSX. 11-0 <laughs> on the street going uphill, and I spun through first. So on the wow. on the drag strip with my with my drag setup, I could probably put down 10 7 or 10 8. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. This is such a canyon cruiser, bro. Like it this, is, yeah, yeah, it's I'm cool. not feeling any of the issues that people say you feel. It's so short. It's only about a foot longer than the, than the Golf. Yeah, it's a tiny car. I have a Golf TDI for my daily driver. Okay. And I line them up next to each other. Yeah, dude, this power. thing rips like crazy. This is a blast. Like that was my fear, right? When I'm looking at this, I'm like, well, if I give up my M2, I'm giving up like a proper driving car. Yeah. And I'm scared that this just is ass for the canyon. But it's by no means. Like, I feel like people focus so much on the speed of these in a straight line because that's the hype of this car. Yeah. And it's so true. People forget. I mean, the Quattro's, Audis are still good cars. All-wheel drive is still proper for the road, you know? I mean, all-wheel drive's always gotten its credit. It's just that Quattro system, similar to the 4Motion. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, is that Haldex that's in my, um, I think the Haldex is the same. No, Haldex is older. I wonder if 4Motion in my Golf R is the same as Haldex. I think it is Haldex. They just call it 4Motion. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like they just have a bad understeer reputation, but that's like whenever they do track tests with these cars. And I'm sure you can set this car up to not do that, you know? Or at least do it less. <laughs> it's so fast. Like the fact that your stage one is hilarious. The difference. I'm sure modding these cars, here let's close this again. Modding these cars is an absolute blast because of the difference you get per part, oh, per yeah. mod, you know? Per, every time you upgrade from stage one, from stock to stage one, you're oh, like yeah. a whole new car. Stage one to stage two, whole new car. 
upgrade your turbos. Your car just went from like a supercar to a hypercar. Yeah, it's completely different. You're running it with lofts on the drag strip. We are approaching some tunnels. So even though he has no exhaust modifications, we'll at least do a couple tunnel pulls. You probably won't be able to hear us, but it will not be windy in the tunnel. So maybe you could hear us a little better. We'll see. After this too, I want to take him in the GT4. We'll see the difference between this and the GT4 in the tunnel. The GT4 in the tunnel, you pretty much want to plug your ears. <laughs> Miltech and Army Tricks, in my mind, is the best. <laughs> my only issue with Army Tricks is you have a valve remote, and that bugs yeah. me. It's like I don't, I don't really want that. I'd rather keep it with the stock, just keep it. Yeah, I just want it with it, OEM yeah. when I switch. You know what I mean? Yeah. We'll just do a second gear downshift in the tunnel because we can't give them all the juice on the uh, exhaust yet. Yeah. Here we go. First launch in the RS3. This is gonna be insane. Oh my god. What the f Why did an RS did an all-wheel drive car just slide that hard. I had to take off. I, I've i never been in an all-wheel drive car that slides tires that much. It just bucked, like it was like, just bucked the front out. All right, let's try that again. We're gonna go round two, cause that just was insane. What the hell? That made my NSX launch feel like shit. Jesus Christ. All right, launch number two. <laughs> speed like like genuinely that is a sub we're gonna ask him what his draggy zero to 60 times are but that is literally a sub three second zero to 60 well maybe even 2.7 i'm gonna guess 2.7 he's gonna tell us that was turbo s speed 100 with sliding tires so if you don't slide tires it's got to be insane wow 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 what are your zero to 60 times in this fastest i've done was 2.9 that's still, sliding tires still huh? spinning tire yeah if you didn't spin tires you'd be in like Easily in Turbo S territory. Probably two seven, two six. Oh my God. I have some slicks at home. I just haven't had the chance to use them. I would literally launch this all day long like an asshole so and <laughs> destroy my car. It's so much fun. That second one, we had less tire spin. Oh, for sure. That was quick. The first time, dude, just buck, just oh, spin. Yeah. I'm like, what the f <laughs> I'm like, what do I do to correct front wheel drive? <laughs> oh my God. Just keep driving, it straightens itself. Okay, <laughs> it's time to do the summary. <laughs> Let me know down below if you guys think this would be a good replacement for the M2. For those who say no, I want you to keep in mind that I do own a GT4. And I want you to keep in mind that everything you like about the M2, the GT4 does better. And having two of those cars is almost pointless. Like for example, I always say, God, I really wanna take my M2 to the track. And I haven't been to the track yet. But if I went to the track, I would take my GT4. Maybe if I went again, I'd take my M2, but I'd probably wish I had my GT4. So it almost doesn't make sense. And like, t I wanna take this car snowboarding. I wanna, say I wanna take my daily snowboarding. And and there's some snow on the mountain. I can't take the M2. I will die. Or just get stuck 30 times and have to creep up the mountain not going anywhere. So especially for road trips, if I want to do long road trips, which I will, I don't mind doing in the GT4. Sometimes it just depends, right? Like if I want to do it with more people, if I want to do it three people, if I want to do, if I want to go on a comfortable road trip and it's going to be long, boring roads, this is the car to 
do it. To go really fast in a straight line, I think building this would make for good content. This car is incredible. It is exactly what I thought it was gonna be. It is a completely different car than a stock RS3, and that's what I like in a car. I like in a car where every time I do a mod, that's what I just pretty much showed you was my reaction, you know? And it probably was a bad idea. Hey, Jared's calling you. Would you like to talk to Jared? Uh, we have to talk to Jared, okay? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this would be a really cool car for the channel. I think I might have ruined myself a little bit because I already drove a tune on which I've actually never in my life driven a tuned version of a car that I bought purposefully so that when I tuned it myself, I had even crazier reactions. But I still think, I mean, I'm not buying one tomorrow, so I still think the tune, the mods would be fun. I think downpipes on this car, you gotta oh, do yeah. it. Gotta do, dude. That's like my We're first mod on every two car. Next. I've already talked to Unitronic about it. I just gotta, you know, go back to work and then uh, spend three grand on there some There you go. <laughs> now, I feel like before we end up this video, because I feel like I didn't touch on this exactly, run us through exactly the mods, what companies, everything you're running on this car. So stage one, Unitronic, E85. Just the ECU and a TCU tune. I have an air intake and a turbo inlet and spark plugs and that's it. Jeez. Besides that, it's stock and all his ass. <laughs> that's crazy. Anyone out there who has an RS3, this screen is really rude to us. And you're stock. Wow. Dude, this is a YouTuber's car. Let's go. Actually, we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to get you out of here. But um, just know that you are a thousand or two thousand dollars away from beating everything on the road. Oh, yeah. Um, I cannot imagine what a stage two one of this is like. I cannot imagine what a big turbo version of this is oh, like. God. It's got to be terrifying. Oh, yeah. I can't even imagine what your car with slicks is like. I just can't. Just, and it just grips. That's so <laughs> exciting. And I'm not going to drive one of those if I decide to buy one of these. Let me know what other cars. I've done this on my Instagram. What other cars you think would be a good M2 replacement? Because obviously I'm not set in stone. But first I need to sell the M2. If anyone wants it, I haven't really announced this yet. I've only said this privately in DMs. My car is a 2018. It's a black shadow edition, which means you get the carbon fiber mirror. Caps, you get a carbon fiber diffuser. You get the black paint, which I forget even the specific name of my black paint, my M2. Mine's DCT and you get the 763M forged BMW wheels, which by themselves, if you were to buy separately, are more expensive than the entire packages itself. They're like $6,000. And that was a package that I, I knew I needed on my M2. I was not gonna buy a non-Black Shadow Edition M2. So with all the mods that are on it, post it on my socials. So if you guys wanna know what it is, it's pretty much stage two plus. With all the mods, normally I wouldn't sell a car with mods. I'd part it out for more money, but I don't really care right now. 50K, if you want the car stock, I have no problem bringing it to SSR. Shout out and putting it back to stock, 46K, which is cheaper than every other Black Shadow Edition being listed right now. And obviously I can't ask ask what a dealer asks because it's a private party sale, but I'm really not pricing it <laughs> to make money. I'm just pricing it to sell it. So if anyone wants it, let me know. DM me. Serious buyers only. Come on, there's a lot of fans out there that'll be like, hey, I want to buy a car. I'm like, okay. Send them all the information, being handy. And they're like, okay, well, I can't afford it now, but big fan of your videos, which is cool. <laughs> cool. Really nice. But you can DM me that anyway, and I'll DM you back. Big fan. I, I love that. I love talking to you guys, but serious inquiries only. Anthony, thank you for today. I appreciate you. Course, guys, Anthony lost fingers in an accident I didn't notice for a really long time. Time. My man's yeah. missing technically two. Couple, yeah. This one doesn't we'll work give, either. So. We'll give that one the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. I had to tell you guys, that's a, that's a crazy story. Uh, <laughs> Be careful with table saws. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, have you ever seen those crazy videos on Instagram of like work at like like commercial accidents? Oh, yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Don't Just go look at that. And if you do, it's not my fault. I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys have a car you want me to drive, want me to test, let me know. We will see you guys on either Wednesday or Sunday. I have no idea what day of the week it is. I never know. So peace out, guys. Boom. Yeah.